The Northeast Texas Sports Network is dedicated on delivering the most entertaining sports broadcasts in East Texas. And if you're interested in having your next sporting event stream live, visit us online at netsn.live.
Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority.
Look over at Payne and brings it home. Here's the pitch. That's inside for ball one. Glenn kind of had to get out of the way of that one, kind of did a 180 there to maneuver. And here's the windup with the pitch. Good movement on that and on the outside corner, but no good, says the umpire. So two balls and no strikes. He's tried that pitch about four or five times here in the last three batters, but no go. And that's a good pitch for him, and it's going to be a long day if Rager can't get that one for a strike. That's Ooh. a high and outside. And Brett, Rager's had a little cut, a little uh, breaking ball that catches the outside corner, but the umpire's just not calling it. And like I was saying, it's going to be a long day if he can't get yeah, that one a, for a strike. Rager's a big kid, too. Yeah, he he's can... huge. About six, what, about six three, six four. Yeah. That's on the outside corner for a strike. A good fastball there. So now it's three and one. But if that breaking ball, like I said, he, 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 he's used that one in his beautiful pitch. But, man, that's going to hurt. So three and one. And Rager from the stretch. Here's the pitch. That's outside for ball four. And we have another base runner first and second. Yeah, so he talked about the start, Keith. And uh, so far, Central Heights is doing what they need to do here early in the game. Well, he's had a few pitches that were strikes that weren't called. So Rager's got to step back, evaluate what the umpire says is a strike and not, and utilize that. He's got good stuff. He just has to find what works and use it to his strength. Yeah, you've got to you've got to adjust to what the umpire's calling yeah. here and, and you know settle in. Sometimes that pitchers take that first couple innings to get get used yeah. to that strike zone. Ashton Wagner is watching that first one go by right down the middle for a strike. That was a nice pitch. And yeah, it really was. So strike one, 0-1 oh now the count. Only one out for the Blue Devils, runners on first and second. Rager from the stretch. Here's the pitch, swung on and miss. They're gonna call that a foul tip. No. Nope. As it goes back to the backstop. You know what I want to call this matchup today, Keith? What's that? It's the Battle of the Blondes. It, it yes, it is the battle. It looks like both teams have bleached. And, and I don't know if and this they're is not jealousy this, and they're not, they're not using the same color blonde either. It's, it's a little different. <laughs> I have Tom at the plate. Both teams have bleached their hair blonde. Intern Claire loves it too. Oh yeah, she's been talking all about it. But these kids, they they have hair. I don't. So I don't know if it's jealousy talking, but they bleached all their hair blonde. So it's crazy. The runner goes, and the hit and run is on, and the double play. Wow. As that is just a bad, fortunate, an unfortunate event that just happened. Uh, Wagner hits it straight to Cole Rager, who is the shortstop, who catches it. The hit and run was on. I mean, Bryce Payne takes how, off for third, and the double play was How hit. far was he and, from the base when he caught that? Like, give me a step or two, right? He just well, caught he was it. Only, yeah. Well, up Whew. in the air, he was a he was he was way away. <laughs> but well, when he came right down, almost on the down, base. I mean, yeah, he came down. So the double play was on. Is Rager, uh, the brother of? I'm guessing the pitcher was. The, he's the brother, Cole Rager and Cord Rager. But the shortstop catches it and takes a nice little hop, skip, and a jump over to second for the double play as Bryce Payne was trying to get the hit and run over to third base. So, after that, interesting, exciting event right there. It was a good hit by Wagner, but didn't quite work out. Hey, during this break, too, uh, between innings, make sure you go over and check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash netison live. Uh, if, you're not, if you're watching on Texan Live or an FHS, uh, slide over there and, and give us a like on this video audio only broadcast and, and subscribe to our channel we got lots of great content um, it'll really help us out and also Brent, if you're listening go tell us where you're where you're watching the game from we like to know where all our fans are coming from um, see who's the farthest away watching this game today with us. And we, we got a little sun reprieve here the clouds kind of came in and helped us out just a little bit with a little cool yeah, in this it, it may last about and two now seconds the sun's back out just enough to time for you to change your glasses well i had to yeah it's hard for me to see <laughs> I, and I'll say this on there, my sunglasses don't have the bifocals that I need to read. Oh, okay. So, yes, my age is coming out. So, here we go. You make, make, ma make intern Claire read for you. Mm, she's busy doing the scoreboard for us. Here we are at the top of the second. Cord uh, Rager. My goal is, is to make her laugh in. all day long. It's going to be fun. <laughs> 
And pitcher against pitcher as West puts that one on the outside corner. One heck of a pitch. That's going to be strike one. And Cord looking at it like, I don't think so. You didn't call that for me. But here's the pitch. Ooh. Swung on and missed for strike two. Did that drop down? Oh, was that a little that movement was, like a slider? That was pretty nasty. That's what it, it looked like to me. It's like the uh, floor below the baseball just dropped out it from did. under it. And Rager went for it. Here's the pitch. That's high and outside. Didn't go for that one. As Rager is now one and two for the count. I'll tell you one thing. West is bringing the heat. Like you, I mean, when that ball is hitting the mitt or the uh, mitt tonight, it's it's popping. Here's the pitch. That's going to be fouled back onto the net. So one ball, two strikes for Rager. I tell you what, Brett. I'm watching. Still, fans are still trickling in for both sides. Oh yeah. This is, these teams have a lot big following. That's going to be off the ground. It bounced about a foot and a half in front of home plate. So obviously no play on that one. Count even at two and two. And West looks in, gets the sign that he likes. And the windup here is the pitch. That's way outside. Almost out of the other batter's box on the right-hand side. So we're ready. The full count, and here's the pitch. That's gonna be inside. Oh, rung, rung him up, man. And Rager kind of looked at the umpire, but I'm digging this umpire, Keith. Yeah, he gets into it. He's gonna if he if he rings you up, he's gonna make you. He's gonna let you know about I mean, it. You got we had some umpires, and we can't even tell if it's strikeout this playoff season. We can't even hear them. And yeah, we're right behind it. So yeah, this umpire is nice to watch. So strikeout number two for F West, and yeah. Tanner Terry steps in. That's a good hit into center field. It's going to be left. Center going to oh, drop. Gaffer and to the wall. All the way to the fence as Terry makes it round second base. But no, oh, he's still up. Nice arm, And he gets man. back to second. Wow. He was gunning for second. He wanted to go all the way to third. A nice nice job for Cade York out there in center, Keith, to get over and get that ball in quickly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> York was booking it. But that hit right in the sweet spot in between left and center field to drop. And a good job by the center fielder, York, to get it back in. But a good hit by Tanner Terry to get that stand-up double. He wanted to go to third, Brett. And his, his coach was just waving those arms, telling him to stop. So Tyson Brooks is now at the plate, trying to bring Tanner Terry home with one on and one out. And Brooks calls for time as West was taking a little bit too much of it. And of course, we're not with the major league rules as far as the time goes. No pitch clock here. That's going to be outside as Tyson Brooks tried for a bunt there, squared around, but no go. So West looks in. Here's the pitch, it's gonna be high for a ball. So that's gonna be uh, two balls and no strikes. West looks, checks the runner at second and here's square around for a bunt is Tyson Brooks, but no go. And it's three balls and no strikes to Terry Tyson Brooks, excuse me. As Tanner Terry. Watches that one in there for a strike. Three and one, the count to Tyson Brooks. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball four. So Brooks gonna make the stroll down to first base. And the Panthers have runners on first and second. Up next, the designated hitter, Morgan Brooks. 
And Morgan Brooks is going to step in. That's going to be a high fly ball. Headache. Out of play. Sorry, we're trying to get our equipment under some fans here. <laughs> yeah. A little hot for you. Here's West with the pitch. That's right down the middle. Good hit over to first base. And West goes ahead and to Mitchell West, the first baseman, goes ahead, looks around, but makes the great choice of heading over to first base and tagging. Yeah, take that easy out. Now yep. you just got to get the batter here. And, and there out gets of the two outs. Time on the play Batting as the umpire wants eight, to take a look at the ball. Nolan Spence. And says that ball is no good. Didn't like that one. And throws it out. So a good heads up, excuse me, heads up play as Morgan Brooks grounds out to first and Nolan Spence is now gonna step in with two out and two on, runners in second and third. And here's the pitch by West and Ooh. swung on and missed. Good, Good breaking ball to the outside. Good, Good pitch. It's a nice little it okay. almost looked like he, he set up for a uh, fastball. And yeah, it was a good break on there. Broke right away from the batter there. So West looks in. And the pitch outside, no. That's going to be a ball, one and one. Sets for a pitch. And West throws over to third. Oh, he's got him. And he's got him for the third out. What a play by West, Keith. Wow. Oh, my Go goodness. West. Great pickoff play that I've seen. Oh. What a move over. That was. Wow. Man, and that ends the inning. And that's Fantastic a big play. Fantastic play oh. by Nick West. Woo. And a great job to get that over there for out number three. So with that, we're going to head to the bottom of the second. Still no score here at White House. And uh, yeah, great playoff baseball, just like I knew we would. So we'll be right back here at White House Wildcat Athletic Complex. Today's game brought to you by Azalea Orthopedics. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. Welcome back to today's game between the May Pearl Panthers and the Central Heights Blue Devils. Brent, how do you think it's going so far? We're already through one and a half here. Well, for a 0-0 game, it's been a lot going on, <laughs> Keith. A lot I mean, of you had a, wow. a couple of big, I call it big plays, and I didn't mention that as one of my keys, but that's probably the fourth key. Those big plays in the game that can that can save innings or, or make innings go farther. Yeah. You had the big double play on the bottom of the first by May Pearl. Um, you had 
the uh, Rager caught the ball, stepped on the bag, got the double play, got them out of a jam, and then you had Central Heights with a great pickoff move by West over to Jackson Glyph, and it, you know, that ended the inning for for uh, Maypril. So two big plays right there that erased base runners and, and opportunities to score here early in this game. And excuse me, Luke Taylor stepping in. And he'll be leading things off this inning. The second baseman. Here's a windup from Rager, who swung on and missed by Taylor. So already finding himself back in the count. No balls and one strike. Here's a pitch on the outside and he swings and the first base umpire they appeal to says yes he did he went around so no balls and two strikes now as Taylor finds himself behind in the count and I'll tell you right now Brad this is a faster pace game than I was expecting yeah it's going pretty quickly so far I mean I don't want to jinx this or anything but well like you talked about last night was 10-5 it's the opposite today so far it's been a pitcher's duel Swung on, missed, and that's strike three. First strikeout for Nick West, and like we said last inning, Brett, it sometimes takes some pitchers a little bit of time to get used to where the umpire likes things, where things go, mm -hmm. and West just had to figure out, or excuse me, not West, Rager had to just figure out where, where this umpire wants things. Yep. And he's, here's Rager with the windup. He's settling in here. Whew, there's that breaking ball, and he finally figured out where to put it. And that one was right over. And does a great job with that pitch, 0-1. Here it comes. High, right about helmet level. 1-1 one one the count. And there's the pitch on the outside, goes all the way to the backstop. And that pitch goes down the middle, but no call. So now it's three and one. Looking to try to get a, a runner on here for Central Heights. And here's the pitch, gonna be outside oh. for a ball. Oh, we called a strike, whoa. And Butner was already halfway down to first thinking it was a ball, but the umpire Ooh. made his call. Yeah, he, and said it, I guess it was on the outside corner. It was a little outside for what you're I on, saw you're there. On that side, Brett. So you may have seen something different than I, I mean, did. It looked a little bit outside, but if that's what he's going to give, then and it's and that's old. a good hit straight into center field territory. And Tanner Terry says, "Not in my neighborhood," and takes that for out number two. So what was thought to be a walk ends up being a fly out to center Getting field. And that's going to bring Cade York up to the plate with nobody on and two outs. So that was something that they thought they were going to get there, Brett, but didn't quite work out. No, it sure didn't. It did not. And uh, now Rager with the windup and the pitch, a good breaking ball, right? Good night. That is just the prettiest thing I've ever seen as that just breaks right over the middle. Don't tell your wife that. Yeah. Apparently my daughter's a little offended with that one too. <laughs> and uh, that one almost hit York as it broke another breaking ball, but that one broke all the way down to the shin of Cade York. So one and one's the count. Here's the pitch. On the outside Ooh. corner for a strike. So it's gonna be one and two. Yeah, Rager's really settling in this inning. So one ball and two strikes. And Rager doing a good job. So far this inning, here's the windup and the pitch. That's high. Oh, you go around? 
Nope. Did not go around as they appealed to, and I. It was I, close. I'll tell you what, I, no, he didn't go around. I saw the the bat. It was it was close though. It was still something for an appeal. So appealed down to first. Did not go as the umpire said no. They got four so ups they, for that reason in this kind of they game. Do. So two and two the count. Here's the pitch. And Ooh. that one, however, did go around. Mm. And not only did it go around, it took York all the way around. And that's the strikeout that ends the inning. So we're through two. Still goose eggs on the scoreboard. And it's anyone's game so far as we head into the top of the third. We're going to be take a break ourselves, kind of cool off a little bit as best we can here in this stifling heat. It's starting to raise up just a little bit. And we'll be right back. This game brought to you by Azalea Orthopedics. Don't go away. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. You are. It was 10 to 5 scored last night in the finals. May Pearl did take that one, but neither team giving an inch this one. That's going to be way inside for a ball as West tried to break that one, but I guess it just didn't have enough English on it to come across the plate. So 1 0 the count. Here's the pitch. That's going to be inside as well. Same spot, same call. So 2 0 the count. And Spence is going to step back in. See what he can get going here. Here's a pitch. That one's going to be hit, but it's going to go out of play. And two balls and one strike now with that foul. Here's the pitch. And with that foul ball, we got a two ball and two strike situation going on. As Spence will step back in. West looking in, trying to get that sign. Finds what he's looking for and wind up with the pitch. The outside, that's gonna be hit. Going straight to Luke Taylor, the second baseman. And that's four to three put out and we have the first out as Nolan Spence grounds out Isaiah Mungia I believe as he steps in top of the lineup Heath Graff is on deck there for a strike. Good pitch by Nick West. And it's 0-1. West with the pitch and the windup and a hit right down the third baseline. And it goes past Glimp into the outfield. We have a base hit. And Mungia turns, takes a look, but stays at first. And a good, good shot. Glimp dives, but misses it. And we have a runner on first for the top of the lineup as he Graf steps up. That was a good hit down the sideline for Mungia. And gets a little action here for the Panthers. Here's the pitch by West, and that's another one up the middle. It's gonna go into the outfield right past Luke Taylor and another base hit. Yeah, so May Pearl trying to get some runners on early here in the inning. 
They're hitting them where they ain't there, Brett. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> where you want to do. You can, you don't have to hit it very hard as long as you put it yep. in play where the other team's not. You can uh, move base runners around. And it's really nothing that the that Central Heights is doing. It's not any mistakes. They're literally hitting them in spots where it's it's just hard to get to. The Blue Devils are doing a good job of uh, of trying to get it. Uh, Taylor dove right there, just right out of his reach. The play before that, Glint just couldn't get there. So they're doing a good job. It's just they're, like I said, hitting it where they ain't. Yeah. Ray didn't like the time that Wes was taking, so he steps out and resets here. Yep. And Bailey Ray is going to set there. Wes checks the runner at second mm. and brings it in there for a strike on the inside corner. 0-1 the count. That's a pretty pitch, Brett. Yeah, if you're if you're Central Heights right now, you're looking to try to make a, maybe get a ground ball to your infield, try to turn two here and get out of hit this inning. Yeah, you got one down, so you really can't do a sack bunt or anything like that. Sack fly, fly is not in play, so a base hit's what you need. That's going to go Ooh. out of play. But you know what he was thinking there? He was thinking down the right, right field line. Oh, there's some space over there. There you... is some space. So no balls and two strikes, though, for Bailey Ray. And the left-hander steps in, takes a look down the third base line. West, now ready, steps in, looks in, and gets to the stretch. Doesn't check the runner. No, now he does. He checks the runner second, brings it home, and that's a high fly ball into right field. And that's going to be caught by the right fielder, Isaiah McGee, oh, no, excuse me, M Mitchell Ashley. Yeah. And Ashley does a good job by bringing it in really fast after that out. They didn't test his arm. Nope, they sure didn't. And <laughs> they wanted to. I mean, they didn't even get off the bag there. Coach was like, no. the media is like, no, we're not. Munguia tried. Munguia actually took about three or four steps and then stopped and went back. They didn't want to get that third out on third again. Yeah. So Cole Rager is going to step in. He's going to see what he can do with two out and two on. As Wes looks in. A long time on that and finally gets what he wants. Checks the runner at second and brings it home and tried to do, <laughs> I love that. Ashton Wagner brings it back in from about the middle of the other batting box and tries to frame it over the strike zone of the plate. But the home umpire was not uh, fooled one bit on that, Brett. No, he wasn't. Here's a pitch by West. That one's outside. Ooh, Another one. He's trying to really frame those. Yeah, he framed that one again. It was the same pitch. I think the or location. Yeah. The, the batter's laughing at him a little bit there. <laughs> he's like, Rager's like, hey, you can't. Th good try there. Yeah, Wagner does a good job though. He's he's good catcher. He's trying to bring that over. West, here's the pitch. That one's over. Ooh, however. nice pitch. No, no framing for that one by Wagner. As that's the strike that he was waiting on. So two and one now. Yeah, he fooled uh, Rager there. He, sure did. He was looking for a fastball. Yeah. So Cole Rager looks in. West taking a little bit more time than usual. Finds what he's looking for. Checks the runner at second and brings the ball home. That's a good hit. Into yeah. left uh oh, right. down the line, Key. Oh, that's going to score a run. That's gets in the corner. Two runs. And Munguia's in. And uh, Graf is in. Wow, what a hit there for Rager. And Cole Rager gets a stand-up RBI double. He helps out his brother there, Keith. Yes, he does. Man. So, uh, here we are. We talked two about outs. going down the line. That was perfect. Yeah, two outs, two on, and Cole Rager gets an RBI double and puts the Panthers on a board, and his brother, Cord Rager, who is probably happy right now about what his brother did. He's going to try to bring his brother in here. He's he going to try to bring his brother in with that big room over there on the right field line side. West looking at second. Now brings the pitch. Ooh. That's going to be down and low at the feet of Cord. Yeah, West has got a – he can't worry about Rager on second right now. He's he's up there dancing at second base, doing all kinds of stuff, trying to distract him. Yeah. He's got to worry about getting this batter out. It's all he needs right here. Yeah, focus on what's in front of you, not what's behind you. That's going to be a hit straight. Oh, wow. snagged out of the air, Keith. Goodness, Bryce Payne. 
Ooh. Just launches up and deja vu of Cole Rager. Man. Last inning that did the same thing. Jeez. With the double play, but the Panthers knock on the door and enter in with two runs for that one. And now we're heading to the bottom of the second and the Blue Devils need to get on the board now and even this thing up. Yep, they've got the blast at bat today. So they've got a, they've got a match here and try to stay with May Pearl early here is. Well, they don't want to get out of hand and they don't no. want to end up, you know, having a situation like, you know, last night because, you know, like we said earlier, this is a must win by Central Heights to get things going for them. We're going to look at some scores here. Uh, we've got a lot of games tonight. You know, not, last night was graduation and that's why our other crew, a lot of games did not, you know, do many, a lot of games did not get played last night. They were played Thursday night or Wednesday night. Some teams took off last night uh, because of a little graduation. We didn't do last night's game because of graduation. So we're going to look at some games that have gone on. And uh, one game that we did last week was we did the Pleasant Grove and Lindale game. Pleasant Grove uh, played Salina this week, and Pleasant Grove lost. Pleasant Grove's a good team, but they lost to Salina. Salina must be a yeah. really good team because Pleasant Grove looked looked great last week. Yes, they did. So Salina advances to the next round, and Pleasant Grove, after a fantastic season, uh, is heading home. We talked about how young they are. They're, yes. they're not going anywhere. They'll be back. And playing right now over at Mike Carter Field is Liberty Ilu and Aubrey. And Liberty Ilu won the first game 5-2. Uh, to two. So Mike, at Mike Carter Field, Liberty Ilu is playing right now. And right now, looking, let's see, I believe they're playing a game three in 40 with Carth Carthage and China Spring as uh, China Spring won earlier today so they're playing a game three today in 40. Yeah that's that's gonna be a good series right there. It is. We know how good Carthage always is. Right. So, so. Luke Williamson for the Blue Devils is stepping in. And here's the pitch. It's gonna be high, but in the strike zone, as the umpire says. So 0-1. Oh Rager taking a look, and here's the windup in the pitch. That's a hit, but it's gonna go over. <laughs> His teammates have to dodge a little bit. And 0-2 oh is the count. Williamson steps in. Lefty versus lefty here, Brett. And that's always interesting to watch. Yeah, you don't see it a whole lot nice. You really level. don't. Here's the pitch. And fouled off again. A little bit late on his swing with Williamson. Yeah, he's been, he's definitely been late. He's been putting his uh, teammates in danger over there in the dugout. Yeah. So he's ready. Rager with windup and here comes the pitch that's Ooh. inside but Williamson does a good job of just kind of watching it and that'll be one ball and two strikes now now here's the windup and Rager brings it good shot down the middle Ooh, man rug him up couldn't believe that one. That was a little low looking to me. Yeah. Uh, but the umpire thought that it was right on track. So Nick West, the pitcher, so it's pitcher against pitcher duel with Bryce Payne on deck at the top of the order. Here's the pitch. And oh, stung him in. The first pitch is a hit by pitch. And he didn't like that one. Yep. Nick West is not very pleased with that. And the umpire is going to go have a little conversation with Cord Rager. Make sure that he understands that uh, we're not playing dodgeball nope. here. Not going to do that. Batting for the Blue Devils, number 11, shortstop Bryce Payne. So the hit by pitch puts a runner on first, you know, and Bryce Payne's going to step in at the top of the lineup. So you know what's interesting about that, Keith, is uh, West will have to face Rager on the other way around. It'll be interesting to see later if uh, 
he throws in on him or anything. Yeah, because actually Rager was up up to bat when West threw out his uh, counterpart over at third. Yeah. So uh, Rager gets to come back up and start the next inning. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Bat, so that'd be <laughs> big fun to fun to see what's going to happen there. Rager with the pitch, and that's foul. Oh, right. that's foul right at uh, Brad here. <laughs> oh, let's check on the other people's cameras yeah. that are sitting by. I can't tell. They've I didn't. I can't see either. Can't tell. Let's see if it works over there. Owen won the count with Nick West over at first. Rager checks on him over there. Oh, our camera's still good that we got there. And here's the pitch. And that one looked good too, but the umpire didn't agree, and it's going to be one and one. See, our, our home plate camera's still good, Keith. Oh, good. It uh, looks great. Awesome. Must well, have been a good job. Whoever put that camera up fastened yeah, it really good. I don't know who does that, does that but he, he needs a raise. Yeah, so right, definitely. <laughs> we all do. There's a pitch. Got a little bit away from uh, Rager there. Speaking of that, uh, anybody that wants to, to uh, sponsor us, uh, we'd love to have your sponsorship. We don't. We do this because uh, we just love it. We don't, you know, charge the schools or anything during the season nope. to cover. So if your school's interested in having us out to broadcast and you'd like to sponsor it, you know, give us a shout, netsnlive at gmail.com or visit our website, netsn.live. And here's the pitch, and the runner goes, and he's caught in a rundown. We'll see what happens. He's, I think he's there. He's in there safe, gets underneath. Great and job by West on that four. slide. Yeah. West took off and actually, I don't know, Rager must have seen something and knew it was coming. Yeah. Well, and, and threw over there and actually West was caught, but the throw was just a, an errant throw by Mitchell West over at first. I thought and I thought it was interesting too, Keith, that, um, you know, he slid, you were playing this turf. It's yeah. not like dirt, so it they seem like they're on a slip and slide mm -hmm. sometimes. So he slid early and slid right underneath him. And I've actually seen players on this very field because I've seen a lot of games on this field slide right past the base if you're not yeah. careful. That's a swing on and miss. And that's the first strike, or excuse me, second strike, so two and two is the count. Doesn't hurt near as bad either. No. Sliding on the dirt's not too fun. No, I, and I've done that myself. Long time ago. Not gonna say how long, <laughs> but I have to have bifocals so you can just guess how, much, how old uh, I am and how old. <laughs> Oh, look at that curve on that. Oh, just a little outside. Nice curve ball there from Rager. That's a good pitch. So it's a full count. Your intern Claire is giving some kind of hand signals over there, Keith. I think yeah. she might be trying to give away some numbers. Yeah, I uh, I thought she was saying that I was a certain age. She said 25 years old is what she was signaling. <laughs> yeah, she's very nice. She wants something. And that's inside for a ball. Yeah, she's when, when do kids not a, want something? Though. Yeah, she'll be a senior next year, so she's bucking for some money right now. So we'll see how that goes. That's going to be a walk as uh, Bryce Payne will head down to first. Well, she, you know, keep that intern title. Maybe she can uh, make some <laughs> money with uh, Nenesee. Maybe. We'll put her to work. She's yeah, she needs to go get us some sponsorships. She does a good job. She's fun to have around, too. Maybe she can... Maybe she can get us some uh, some good sponsors over there. She's got some connections in uh, in Troop. Oh, yeah. Mitchell Ashley is now going to bat. It's a throw. Oh, no. <laughs> that faked me out as Nick West tries to get back real fast, but no throw was even done. It was just a good fake out by Cord Rager. Faked me out. This is a big inning here for Central Alliance. They, got, they can do some damage here and try to get back in it. And that's on the outside. And top of the lineup here, too, so yeah. really good opportunity. Well, Mitchell actually had a sacrifice bunt uh, his first at bat in the first inning to move Payne over to second. And this is when Payne got caught in that uh, double play. That's going to be hit. And that's going to go straight over to Rager. Rager over to first. Ooh, and that's throw. in time. And that will advance the runners into scoring position, but it gives two outs on the board for the Blue Devils, so it's kind of a bittersweet, you know, situation here. As Jackson Glint, who walked nice at the time he was at bat, steps up to the plate. 
All right, we got um, we got Faith Burns. Says I'm watching from May Pearl ISD. Glad to hear the announcers. We can't view it on YouTube, so I'll continue to watch Texan. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching, Faith. We uh, yeah, Faith. for playoffs, we have to do it on Texan. Oh, Ooh, that, that was a hit by pitch. Sorry to interrupt, Brett. Oh, you're good. Uh, that that stung a little. That's gonna put the bases loaded for their cleanup. You know, and you gotta wonder if that's happened a few a few times because he has a uh, a, a, a guard on his elbow. Yeah. that he wears so that probably happens more often than not sorry but, about that faith that he was talking about yeah that. no you're you're good <laughs> uh, uh i was just gonna let faith know we appreciate their tuning in um yeah make sure you like and subscribe our uh, our channel though while you're there um but yeah the video is only on on uh, text live unfortunately ual charges uh for those games so we can provide you free audio um or you can check out our text and live covers. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in and listening to us. And the audio is the same thing you get as the video, just without the video. Yeah. You get the screen, you know, the scoreboard and everything else, and our lovely it, voices. Yeah, it's the uh, it's it's not just uh, radio. You get you get audio plus you get all, everything except video. Right. So, so Ashton Wagner is going to step up after the hit by pitch on Glint, and base is now loaded, and that's going to be hit foul Ooh. ball on the right hand side down the right field. So this is a big at bat for Ashton Wagner and the Blue Devils. And Cord Rager has got to kind of calm down a little bit as he's hit two batters this inning. But he's also struck out and walked one. Yeah. I mean. And he's got the ability. He's got, uh, you know what I haven't seen yet is that breaking ball. So I know he's got it. We threw that nice curve earlier. I will, sh I will share, and I have noticed this inning, that the Blue Devils are a lot closer in they're they're crowding the plate, and I don't know if that's by design, because I've never I haven't watched the Blue Devils, the, the Blue Devils, and I haven't really focused on it. But they are looking like they're crowding a little bit, and I don't know if they're doing that on purpose. But they have had two hit by pitches this inning, so that's a good way. But no run because that backstop bounced that ball right back at Tyson Brooks. But it's going to be one and one. And as you can hear, probably behind us, we got a lot of fans cheering on their team. A little chatter going. Not a lot of chatter going. But that's to be expected when you get into this far of the playoffs. Rager brings the pitch and good high and outside. So two balls and one strike. So Wagner steps back in. And he is really in as his feet are in the in the paint. Yeah, you can't wipe that line away like in the dirt. No, you can't. Here comes the pitch. Good pitch, but no call. And oh. that one was just beautiful Man. as it broke right over the plate on the inside corner, but no call as three and one is down the count. And you're looking at one, and pitch, one pitch away here from yeah. walking in a run key. And Rager's got to do something. And we're going to see what... He dials up here as he's in the stretch, and here comes the pitch. Right down the middle. It's and high. It's high, says the umpire. Yeah, a little high inside there. Walk. So the coach is going to head on out and have a conversation with Rager. Probably just calm him down a little bit. Because, in my opinion, he hasn't really pitched bad. He's not doing anything, in my opinion, that's out of bounds. He just, you know, some of them are a little out, but not getting some calls on some. I'm just going to settle him down a little bit. So probably giving his teammates a little bit of an opportunity. And really what he needs to do is, is pitch, just pitch the ball and allow the team behind him to, yeah. to back him up. He's got to know they can. He's just got to put the ball uh, down the middle where basically the forces uh, Central Ice to have to swing the bats. And that's what some of these high school pitchers forget. You've got a team behind you. You don't have to no hit every single time. So and, Luke and Taylor can, is going to step in. And you, you can no hit by letting them hit the ball exactly. as long as you're pitching where you can, your team can field behind and you. And there's the pitch right down the middle. I don't know that I've ever seen a no hitter, Keith, that was all strikeouts. Right. You yeah. had to have a team to help you behind you. You do. And I'm not sure what Luke Taylor was waiting on, but if he was waiting for any better of a pitch, you wouldn't have found one by, other than that. Great pitch by Cord Rager. Yeah, he might have, might have had a take on. You know, if, if, yeah. you know, Rager struggled this inning. Maybe that was the, the sign for to take was on. 
And Rigger steps back. Because otherwise, otherwise that was a that was not a not a bad pitch to uh, swing at there. So Rager with the windup and pitch high and outside for a ball. And the fans now getting into it a little bit. And one and one, two outs, bases still loaded. And one run in for the Blue Devils here in the bottom of the third. Here's the pitch by Rigger. Hit. And it's going to go over to Bailey Ray. Ray's going to get it over to first. And the 4 3 out is going to end the inning. One run did come in, but that's all she wrote for that one as Rager does a good job of getting out of that inning with only one run as the May Pearl Panthers still lead after three, two to one. And we're going to take a short break. Today's game brought to you by Azalea Orthopedics. Like and subscribe so you don't miss a minute of the action. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. And we are back at the top of the fourth now. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, Tanner Terry is up. I guess uh, Rager's not. And that's, I guess I was wrong. I, I, I would have thought that Rager would have been the one that would step in after that last thing. Because didn't we end on a throw out at? I'm trying to think how that transpired but well I could have been wrong it's happened before but either way Tanner Terry is up to bat and West with the wind up in the pitch that's going to be Ooh. swung on but uh, tip for strike you know, this uh, game kind of reminds me of the, we know we covered a lot of Lindell Van this year. Yes. The blue, red, <laughs> the split of the fans kind of here. Right. We're in the oh, middle. It is, yeah. To your left, you've got all the central lights in blue, and then you turn right, and you've got red all the way around in Maypearl. Yes. There's a pitch. It's going to be bouncing in. So two and two now for ta uh, Tanner. Especially since, you know, both teams yeah. well, well supported here. Now, you remember, Brett, Tanner Terry hit a double back in the fourth to get things going. So we'll see what he can do in this one. That's going to be inside once again. So a full count to Terry. And this is a good opportunity. This is about when, you know, teams start feeling out your pitchers. Mm -hmm. You get your timing down. They've already gone through the lineup a couple of times. And so you start to get some hits. That's a swing and a miss as I say that. And a strikeout down as Tanner Terry goes and has a seat. Tyson Brooks, who walked back in the second, is up to bat. That's the second player we've seen with the little hoodie yeah, I don't coming know. out of the back. I don't know if that's like, and he's got, well, I don't know. It's, it, just, it's interesting just because it's so hot right now. But you know, kids wear hoodies now all the time Whew. in school, so, Man. and everywhere. I don't know. Why. I like a good hoodie just uh, in the winter. It's a little colder. <laughs> but we're old. Here's a pitch. I'm old anyway. <laughs> uh, great breaking ball by Nick West. That breaks over to the outside corner for strike one. Oh, 
And West looks in. Here's a wind up in the pitch. That's going to hit, Ooh. but bounce, bounce back and hit. Right off of uh, his leg. In his, in his shin. Ooh. That hurt me a little bit. Yeah, that's going to have, have a bruise tomorrow there. Just kind of walking it off a little bit. I'd have been down for <laughs> five or ten minutes here at least. <laughs> One thing, Brett, I like about uh, the field here at White House Athletic Complex is the, the pitch count out on the, on the scoreboard. Uh, yes. There's going to be a hit over to the first base side. Mitchell West gets it, tosses over to Nick West for out number two. <coughs> Pardon me. And that's going to be two down as Morgan Brooks steps up. Brooks grounded out back in the second inning is hit at his first at bat. And here's West with the pitch. That's going to be high and outside for a ball. And the infield is back a little bit on the second and shortstop side. That's going to be fouled oh, straight back. Right over the top of it. As Brett ducks under the table. Yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> It comes straight at him. But as I was saying, yeah, the second and, and shortstop are second baseman and shortstop are back uh, right off the infield into the outfield grass there. There's a good pitch. That's going to be high, however. You mean outfield turf, the green turf. I'm Look, we're going to call it the grass. <laughs> it is the turf, but we're going to call it the grass. The green turf versus the, uh, <laughs> the brown dirt, brown dirt turf. Two and one to count. Here's the pitch by West. That's going to be straight down the middle. And even the count at two. I don't think you could mow the grass. It looked that pretty, Keith. It's, no. You know. Oh, you probably could. I've seen some. Uh, I've seen some professional major league fields that can do that, but they cost a little bit of money. There's the pitch by West. It's going to be straight into the outfield past Bryce Payne, who dies for it. And we have a base hit and a base runner for the Panthers. Those guys probably get paid pretty good money to keep that field nice. They probably do. That's their job. And they do it well. Nolan Spence grounded out in the third inning, last inning. Uh, speaking of pain, got, getting over there, almost getting that ball was impressive. That I mean, was. He, he, he covered some ground. And, and once again, it's just hitting it where they're not. And... It, it wasn't that he was out of place. He was in a good spot. He just couldn't get there. It was just one of those one of those positions. That's high and outside for a ball and one. But a great hit by Morgan Brooks to get on first base. Got to give him his due on that one as he's over at first. And West brings it home. That's going to be high. Hit out of play over to the right field side. So one and one. As West looks in. Brooks over first. And that's going to be a hit. Short little tough play over there. And oh, got him. What a play. Jackson Glimp. Man. And Glimp makes a good play on the ball. It was a little. A little dink donk over there that on was the third a, base line. That was an incredible play, guys. Yeah, for Jackson. one, for one, he had to charge it almost halfway down the line and field it. Yeah. And then while he was almost, he almost didn't even come up. He almost fielded the ball and then threw it from the being low. He, yeah. he was, it was almost sidearm type throw, right on the money and just kidding the runner at first. It, it, was, it was the equivalent of a bunt. It was like a hard swing, you know, full swing bunt down the third base line. And Glimp just did, like you said, did a good job. So, a, lot, a lot of good defense today. Very good. So we're going to head to the bottom of the fourth now. As no score, or excuse me, as no score in the top of the fourth for the Panthers. And now the Blue Devils are going to have an opportunity to at least tie it. And they're going to try to as we head a little bit further into this ball game. 
So we're gonna take a short, short break here. And our sponsor for today's game is Azalea Orthopedics. Don't go away. Cameron Butner is leading things off for the Blue Devils. And talking about being here in White House, the White House Wildcats are going to be at Dallas Baptist University tonight at 5 o'clock. They're going to be playing Frisco Wakeland in their playoff game. There's going to be a fly ball out of – foul ball out of play. Yeah, I talked to the coach a little bit when we got here early to set up, and he said that – they got down early 3-0 and, and just couldn't get back in it, but so they, they should win. He, he's confident that they can come back and get two today and, and move on uh, to the next round. That's going to be inside for a ball, now one and one. White House, a good, a good team. They're 31-7 and seven on the season, playing a 24-12-3 Frisco Wakeland team. So good matchup there at Dallas Baptist. Well, another thing is, too, You've got another uh, district foe on the other side of the bracket, Longview, which knocked out knocked out the district champion Hallsville yeah. last week. And They're so, playing Frisco Reedy, and they won the first game. So yeah. and possibility playing, of being in all East Texas uh, regional final there. And they're playing at Reedy right now. That's in there for a strike. So it's two and two now. The count to Butner as Ranger, Rager is just pitching his heart out up there. And I'm going to check on the score uh, for the Longview game because it's going. That's going to be fouled out of play. So Cameron Buechner steps in. Rager looking for the call. Finds what he's looking for. And here's the pitch. That's going to bounce oh. right in front. And Brett tries to catch it. It spun but up at me. Brett is throwing the other side of the net, but can't catch it. Could have had it. I thought it was going to go all the way up the net. It had so much spin on it. <laughs> so now it's a full count. Three and two. And Rager takes a look. Here's the pitch. That's oh. that. And that went straight at you, my friend. Man. They're coming right at, they're coming they, for me today. Yeah. They are coming at you on that one. That was a nice little foul back, so the count remains the same. So here's the pitch by Rager, and that's down low, so Butner will take his stroll over to first base. The fifth walk that Rager has dealt today as Cade York takes a stroll. And the Blue Devils coach heads out and makes a couple of adjustments, tells his batter and his base runner a couple of things. So we'll see what happens. Breaks down what? for a bunt and that going to work to perfection as the sacrifice bunt by Cade York puts Butner at second in scoring position. He's just trying to move the runner around yep. so they can get the runner in to tie this game. And tie this game. So Luke Williamson's now going to step in. He's left-handed. <laughs> Here's our lefty-lefty matchup again. Yes. Keith. We talked about a little earlier. And, and it, it didn't work well for Williamson last time as he struck out. No, and he didn't like the call there either. At, nope. On the strikeout. So Rager takes a look at second. Nothing there, and there's a Ooh. hit. It's going to be fouled. And now 0-1. Rager watching Butner over at second intently. And here's the pitch. 
That's going to be outside. Look like off the corner, but a little bit too far. Yeah. More along the lines of that uh, right-handed batter's box line, a little bit in there. Yeah. Good eye there for Williamson. So Rager goes. Here's the pitch. That's going to be hit down the first base line, but it's going to go foul. Well, he's, he's, he's trying for down. He's trying to pull it down the line here. He's, he's pulled it in the dugout the first time. That was a little bit closer. Right. More towards his first base coach. Um, there's there's space over there in the in right field. So yes, there is a lot. He can score a run. They're giving him a little bit too much uh, room over there in that right field. Yeah. However, you never know. McGee may have some oh. speed. That's going to be a ball that gets away. And that's going to put. Oh, they're going to say he. Right? No, I think What's they said happen? that he, he swung and it was a drop third strike. So then they tagged him out because he didn't run. Because I, I heard from behind him ah. saying he went. And so the, the catcher tagged him. And, ah, and they appealed, they appealed the, on that one. the call and they said he went around. Yep. So. so another strikeout on there and now Nick West, but it does advance that runner. The runner was yeah, the runner good on it and did run. It's almost a sacrifice strikeout there. Yeah. So now with two outs, Nick West, who was hit by a pitch his last time up, really hasn't had an at bat yet against Rager. And that's straight Ooh. down the pipe. Man. That's a fine how do you do <laughs> on that one. Uh, right now, real quick on that long view, Frisco Reedy. Uh, Reedy is leading two to nothing in the middle of the fifth. Okay. So I'll keep update on that one. Here's a pitch. That one swung on a miss for strike two. Yeah. Rager's settling in here, Keith. Sure is. Making it a very interesting game. And Rager's looking to pitch this one, strike this guy out, and keep it a two-to-one game and the lead for his team. Here's the pitch on the outside. Trying to make West go fishing, but didn't take. And now we have a one-and-two count. And with Butner down on third, he's itching to get across that home plate as well. So Rager's got to keep that ball really close. That's going to be foul back. And the count remains one and two. Here's the pitch by Rager. That's going on and oh. strikeout. Wow. So Nick West with the strikeout. And so they'll leave a runner at third. And they'll go into the top of the fifth, still trailing two to one. As Maypearl still holds that lead and they'll be coming up the bat here. So good job by Cord Rager to get out of that one without allowing any runs. Trying to see if there's any, been any change. Got some movement, Brett, down in the Maypearl bullpen area. Yeah, I got some guys warming up. I don't know if that means anything. Uh, the pitch counts really aren't far out of bounds. For West, he's only got 71 pitches into the game, as Rager has 60. So it's really not too bad. Yeah, still got three innings to go, so. Maybe just kind of precautionary in case they need to get somebody in. Could be that somebody coming out off the uh, bench is not in the game too. That right. That's get kind of loose. So we're back here and gonna have things going as uh, Isaiah Mugia is gonna step in and lead things off here in the top of the fifth. Leading off for the Panthers. He had a base four, hit. A good solid base hit the last time he was up. See if he can lead things off and get things going. Uh, 
Uh, to the outside for a ball. Man, Wagner just, it's like a string's got in his mitt, Keith. It's yeah. immediate, he pulls in. Well, that, and that's a well taught. That's that's a, you know, a good job by can, center height coaches. You can, you can that's going to be hit straight over to second base as Taylor's there. And throw it over to first is Mitchell West for the 4 3 put out. And out number one. Back at the top of the lineup, Heath Graff. Going to get over there, get into the batter's box, get things going. Let's see, we got uh, Kyle's tuned in, said said we sound good. We got the, the KO. Uh, it's high praise from Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Thank Appreciate you, Kyle. Kyle for, uh, Tuning in. That pitch is going to bounce about a foot in front of the home plate and get all the way back to the net trying Kyle, to hit Brett. Kyle kept all the runs with him last night, though. He, yeah, I he, think he did. We got a pitching duel today, Kyle. So thank you for that. Gives us time to talk. It's going to be one ball and no strikes to Heath Graff. Wind up in the pitch from West. That's a good movement. <laughs> that thing just like to, you know, Mm. I liken that to, you know, the cartoons that you, with the baseball cartoons and they throw in that pitch kind of stops and kind of circles around and then <laughs> drops. That's what that was. That was just a pretty pitch by Nick West for the first strike. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be hit. Going to go to Bryce Payne for the 6-3 over to West. And out number two. Nice job by Payne. Payne got over there. He, he's missed a couple, not by choice. He's... He dove for a couple in some no man land situations, but that one was the easy pickings. Bailey Ray, he's flown out both times he stepped up. Gonna try to change his fortune on this. And he's gonna take a step back and reset here again. Oh, and I've noticed on certain batters, and I'm not quite sure why on certain batters uh, Miss West up there takes a little bit longer to get Oh nice pitch nice. on the corner Keith. You had a great view of that one. How'd that, that look? Right on the corner. It was a neck high but it was right on the corner for strike one. But I have noticed yeah West takes a little bit longer for certain ones and I don't know if that's another a one. Game. That was the same pitch right on that outside corner. And he's painting that corner right now. And it's not no movement nothing that's straight paint just fastball right down so we'll see what Ray does on this one here's the pitch that's a little low that went digging for worms on that one for yeah. ball one he wanted Ray to go fishing for that yeah one. he did but didn't bring any bait didn't get to go so one and two is the count as Nick West takes a look in and the wind up here's the pitch that's going to hit over to the first base sign Mitchell West Strolls over and does a little toss. It's to the West, West to West connection the other way around this how, time, Keith. How the West was won on that one was an out over at first base. So ground out, three up, three down, go the Panthers. And we're through four and a half here at White House High School at the White House Athletic Complex. And we're going to take a short break. Today's game brought to you by Azalea Orthopedics. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority.
We are back here in White House, Texas for some great East Texas baseball, great Texas playoff baseball, actually. As Central Heights and May Pearl. We'll give a shout out to our man, uh, Matt Diggs. He, he you know, made, made sure he was, a, we were aware that May Pearl was a DFW yes. team, so. That's why I said just Texas, I'm, I changed. Oh, <laughs> nice Bring shot. Bryce Payne leading things off with a base hit straight up the middle in the center field as he is the leadoff hitter and the leadoff hitter of the inning. And a great job to start the bottom of the fifth. And Mitchell Ashley is gonna come in. Mitchell, ha or Ashley's had a uh, sacrifice bunt in the first and grounded out in the third. And I have a feeling, I bet you they're gonna try to do another sack bunt on him in yeah. this one. We'll see here. Nobody out and throw over. Not in time, kind of a just yeah, a yeah. It was more of a nonchalant. Hey, just make sure out. you're, you know, I'm paying attention to you. I see you. I see you. All right, Ashley steps in again. Rager checking, and there goes the runner. Oh, and a little high of a throw, but that that puts uh, hey, that, Turner. That's the second time that's happened today, Keith. It is the second time. However, Rager a little bit on that. He throws it high, and Turner had to take the time to jump for the ball. Yeah. Which took the timing off on the throw to second, which allowed Payne to get over to, to second base on the steal. Well, now if they do choose to go the bunt route, you can get them all the way to third. Yeah, so. that changes, and I was just going to say that changes the dynamic here. You have Mitchell Ashley who can bunt in a sack bunt situation to put a player just that much closer. So do you do that, Brett? He doesn't have any, nobody's pitched to him so. yet. I think so, I think they're, I think he, well, no. And that's gonna be high and outside. He didn't show bunt that time. Nope. So we're gonna look over and it's a possibility that that's what's gonna happen. I, you know, I would do it. Yeah, but I think. I'm, that's why I don't coach. So we got a wave off here. Wait. And the umpire. Not sure what's going need a little on. bit of a time. Two, four, three, <laughs> whatever that means. So the Mitchell Ashley steps in after having a little conversation with his third base coach. Right, you're looking in. Here's the pitch. And that's gonna be hit over to second base. Well, that basically does and the same Bailey thing. Raised over. That's, and the ground out does the same thing. It's essentially a bunt yeah. there, just a little hard version. So sends Ash, sends Payne over to third, and 90 feet away is the tying run. As Jackson Glenth, he was hit by pitch and walked his two times up. So he's been on base twice. Yeah, just hasn't really. O for O with yeah, two two times being on base here. Yeah. So he's due to do yeah, something here. Let's see what he can do here. As Rager looks in for a sign. And here's the pitch. That's going to be on the oh, outside corner for good, a strike. Good pitch. And you were in position on that one. I that was, looked like. That was a good pitch. It was right on that outside corner. It's the exact opposite of the last one with Wes painted on the other side. It's perfectly on this, uh, I guess, left batter's box sideline there. And that one on the inside kind of went the opposite direction, but that was a ball, so one and one, now the count. And Glimp looks down for a sign. Steps into the batter's box and waits on the pitch from Rager. Rager from the stretch, and here comes the pitch. Straight Ooh. down the middle, swung Ooh. on and missed. And that was a beautiful pitch. Kind of kind of got him way behind. Yeah, kind of got him stuck up. He was a little high there. It yeah. was kind of an awkward swing. He had to. Well, it was high and, and, and Glimp pit. I mean, the ball was already passing by the time he, he brought the bat around. So a little bit behind there. And here's the pitch. And Ooh. another swung on and missed. So that was strike three and out number two and now that player over on third base is way more important than it has been. Yeah. 
Yeah, you got another chance. They had, they had some chances to get runners in that have been 90 feet away, and they have so far haven't been able to really take advantage of that here I mean, in this game. That was game. a perfect spot for a uh, sacrifice fly as Wagner takes the first pitch on the inside for a strike. And Rager, Rager, I think, watching Ray, Col, uh, Cord Rager, he works well under pressure. He, yeah. It seems like he comes out. He gets mad. <laughs> he comes out and just He's taking chunks it out. the ball. He's taking it out on him. And that's going to be a hit. Ooh, it's going to be a tough play. Slow roller over to second, Ooh. but Trailer's there. Taylor's there for the 4-3 put out. And once again, the Blue Devils have a runner on third and cannot produce a run to tie the ball game. And the score remains two to one. Yeah, nice job there by Bailey Ray to get over there. That was a tough play for Ray. I mean, he he was he was kind of had to run to the two towards uh, first base to his left. Yeah. And and Turner does a good job to just get there and focus. He was, he was close enough to, to flip it to him. Yeah. But you and I both know that little flip sometimes misses. We've it's, seen it yeah, happen where it doesn't it. always connect. So. so it was a good job by Turner to just focus and get that ball in. And good job by Rager to once again for two innings in a row, really three innings in a row, because he had the bases loaded at one point, get out of an inning with and he's, he's still at minimal eight, damage. He put him at 80 pitches there, Keith. Yeah. And so, you know, he still got well away from the 110 that would, would sit you down if, mm -hmm. if possible. So he's got 30 more pitches, yeah. and that's, that's probably enough to get him through two innings as long as he's, you know, gets gets through there and doesn't get in any trouble. Because so. we're heading into the sixth, and so time is slowly ticking away for the Blue Devils. Now but your, your West, but West is in good, in good shape here, though. Oh, yeah. He's only at 69 pitches, yeah. and he's still got the three innings left. So we'll but. see what happens here for both of these teams because right now it, it's – too close to call for anything yeah. because both of these teams with the two and one two to one ball game you can't just say oh well this well, this and if we take the third inning out then there's been no score other than right. that so and both pitchers have just done a fantastic job but of course that's why they're here <laughs> oh yeah exactly in this position and that's why Cole Rager, number 10 is going to step in for the sixth inning to lead things off here in the top so here we go. Cole Rager has an RBI double the last time he was up. And he's the reason that the two runs are on the board for the Panthers so far. Here's the pitch. That swung on and missed as that one dropped off the table right under the bat of Rager. Good pitch by West. And here's another one. That's a high fly ball in the outfield. And not really in the outfield. I guess it's going to be more infield for us. As Bryce Payne says, I got it over at shortstop. Looked like it was hit harder than it, than it, it just was. was hit, it was hit really high. Yeah. So a fly out into the infield for Cole Rager is out number one here in the top of the sixth. And now Cord Rager will step in. And we have a pitcher-to-pitcher -pitcher situation. This is the first time that Cord has been in here since he hit Nick West a couple of innings ago. That's good on the outside corner for strike one. I would say you think West remembers, but... Uh, Pitchers pretty, have long memories, I'm telling you that right now. Pretty sure he does. Here's the windup from West and the pitch. That's going to be hit over to the first base side. Mitchell West has it. Toss over to Nick and out number two. Quickly, the Panthers are two outs down. West to West has been successful. Has been either, all night. Either way, it's gone. Tanner Terry next, is fielder. stepping in. Tanner Terry. He's had a double back in the second and struck out his last at bat. Here's the windup in the pitch. Ooh, That's the on the outside Ooh. corner. I saw that one. Yeah, that I did a, too. That was that I, was a strike halfway down the. It, when it came out of his hand, it was yeah. a good pitch. You could tell. Yeah, I called that a strike before. Yeah, Ooh. that was just pick, pitch perfect, so to speak. Man. No pun intended. Here's a pitch. And Ooh. swung on and missed for he, strike two. He's making quick work so far. He's one pitch away from and West one, two, looks three. as good as he did in the first inning now. Oh, yeah, he And does. here we are six innings in. Can I say he looks better? Yeah. 
I mean, because he's got a little more confidence in him, a little more zip in that ball. That's a high fly ball going to be fouled out of the territory. Heads up, Central Heights yeah, people. It's going to be way over in the softball field area. Hopefully no one was uh, standing over there. So I always, worry, I always worry about those kind of balls because those are where your, your kids are playing, playing. kind of over there out of the way, and they don't really aren't paying attention. No balls and two strikes. And West with the windup. Here's the pitch. That's low. Ooh. Swung on, and it's going to drop. Got a little do house cleaning there. Wagner throws on to West. And up, three up, three down go the Panthers, and we're on to the bottom of the sixth. So a big at bat coming up here for the Blue Devils. In fact, the next two are going to be big depending on what happens because the amount of outs are slowly shrinking. And we're going to have a pitching change, looks like, yep. uh, Keith. We talked about they were at, someone was out warming up while ago. It looks like that's going to be uh, number six, Bailey Ray stepping yep. in the pitching here for Maypearl. And that's, yeah, that's going to put We'll see what kind of changes that makes for our. Well, that's going to put Cord uh, Rager over at first. Yep. And then you got, where's Ty Turner end up? That's what we'll need to see. And I believe that Bailey Ray was actually the second baseman. So yeah, he's he the was. second. We'll see. That may have put Ty Turner over at second. I don't see anybody at second right now. It's hard to tell right now as they're warming up where they're going to sit them or put them. So yeah, they took Rager out, which I'm I'm actually kind of surprised, but I guess they're they're playing for the win on this one. Yeah, uh, and bringing in. You're going to bring in the clo a closers, a fresh possibly. arm here that they haven't got to see today. Well, they've got this. You know, uh, maybe the the coach feels that. Uh, you know, they got their, they got their, uh, the timing down. Yeah. Well, last couple innings, uh, I would say, besides the one inning, I'd say Central Heights has had the better opportunities to score here recently. Let's see if we, see if we can figure out. Looks where like Morgan Brooks is going to be your second baseman, and I believe. He is the designated hitter. Okay. So probably Ty uh, is going to be the designated hitter. He may be in the. Yeah, we'll see when they come around the bat if anything changes. But so we'll we'll try to get all this figured out for you. But right now. Luke Taylor is stepping in and he'll be the first to match ba to bat against uh bailey ray who throws a ball to get started so the interesting thing here keith is you go from a lefty to now a righty right. so it's a little bit different adjustment than and just that, a new pitcher yeah and that'll throw a kink in you is that Ooh. is a beautiful little breaking ball that goes over the plate for a strike and that's going to be one and one And Taylor backs up, calls time, and steps in. Here's the pitch. And Ooh. a good break, but a little high for a ball. That's some funky movement on that it there. That was weird. That started on the outside. It went this way. It, it went like towards me and then back towards yeah. you. Quick pitch here. That's a good pitch, but high. That was around the eye level. Well, as we are about eye level to these players as we're sitting kind of high up. So three and one, and Ray needs to settle down a little bit. Ooh. And, <laughs> and we have a full count Man, here. He reared back and fired that he one. He did, he, he did not hold back with that pitch. And time is called. It's like a little cat and mouse game here. Yeah, it really Play. is. So full count as Taylor waits for a pitch, and that's going to be hit straight Ooh, up really to the pitcher. And a good little toss underneath by Ray over to Rager. And one out. 
That was a that was a really high chopper, Keith. That was that kind of that hit right in front of home plate, and popped really high. Ray had to kind of wait on it to they land. Say Twenty or thirty feet in the air. And yeah. that was pretty. By the time it landed, uh, Taylor was halfway down to first base. Yeah. And good job by Ray to kind of just get it over to Rager. That's going to be high for Butner. Butner walked his last at bat. So here's the way things could change right here, Keith. Uh, right now it's 2-1. Central Heights is trying to fight back. They get two runs here. All of a sudden, Maypril's got a score yeah. to stay in the game. And that's how quickly this is, could, right. could change in, in an instant here. Well, because, yeah, because we're in the, yeah, exactly. We're in the bottom of the sixth. That's a good pitch on the outside for a strike. Yeah, Man. two runs scored in this flips the script where the Panthers have to get something going. That's way outside for a ball, so now it's two and one. And we told you earlier that we saw some action in the bullpen, but this is not the pitcher that was there. That's a hit. Ripped down the line, Keith. Holy mackerel, what a and shot. That's going to go as Buechner takes the turn over to second, and it's almost. Ooh, man. Almost got caught as Nolan Spence gets to the ball. And that's a big base a, extra pick, though. I mean, you, yeah. if you're Central Heights at this point, you got to take the take the chance to and get that runner over. Buner does a good job of getting there, but Ooh. he got there about a second before the ball did, and and it was a split second. I'm gonna call it that way. But that's all you need. Yep. So a double. He did that slip and slide we call it out here on this turf and slid sure right did. in. Now, Cade York is going to step in. I really think that that's an advantage for the, the base runners, Keith. Being able to slide and kind of coast in like that. Instead yeah. of if you dive too early on dirt, you get your momentum gets stopped and, and you get <laughs> you, tagged yeah, out. You, you lose that, yeah, that push. Here's the pitch. A great pitch breaking over the outside corner for a strike. And it's 0-1 with a runner on second. One out for the Blue Devils, and they're knocking on the door to at least tie the ball game. And Brett, if it gets tied, and the Panthers can't score in the top, then the Blue Devils will have another at bat yeah. to go ahead. They'll have another at bat anyway, because they get the last at bat no matter what. That's gonna be down low as York tried to go for it. But pull back just in time, so two and one the count. Ray hasn't come out what you call super sharp, Keith. He's been kind of inconsistent. Well, he's picking at the corners. He hadn't really. He hadn't found that meat he yet. He hadn't found that hit yet. That's yeah. going to be outside for a ball. So now it's three and one. What you don't want to do is give momentum to this team. You can kind of feel the crowd to our left oh, yeah. starting to get a little bit of. Uh, they've been quiet today, but I. Something happens here, they're gonna be loud. Here's the pitch by Ray, and a beautiful that's pitch a, that's off the outside corner, and I tell you what, York knew it. Yeah, he knew it. He's like, oh man, that was yeah. my pitch. I missed, missed that one. York knew it. As soon as it went over, he didn't even try to take it off over to first base. So a big pitch by Ray. Check second, brings it home, and oh. fouled back. Whoa. Oh. That was right in front of us. Hey, the camera's still good. Thank you. It's a home plate camera there for you guys at home. And still, still one piece there. So here we go. Full count. Here's the pitch by Ray. Off outside. the outside yeah. and walk. As the umpire calls it a ball, so now we have two runners on base at first and second. Luke Williamson steps in. Well, Luke, Luke has struck out all both times that he's been in. He's uh he's looking for some redemption here. Now he's got a he's got a righty up there, so this right. could be a the, this could be a little bit of an advantage for him. Yeah. And I tell you what, down that third base line or first base line is a good place to hit when you have runners at first and second, and you're wanting to put something across that home plate. Yep. Let's we'll see if Williamson can get out of that slump here in this game and get and a you run. you have a big gap between center field and right field. So Ray looking. 
Here's the pitch. That's going to be hit straight Ooh, up. That's going to be tough. As Ray gets it, throws over to first. Ooh, he just time. got him. Nice and play down right. Two, but it does advance the runners. And that puts Nick West in the driver's seat here to and bring so, somebody home. So I'm feeling deja vu, Keith. Yep. Right, this well, last few innings, they've had 90 feet away. I believe the, the last four innings, they've yeah. had runners at third and haven't been able to bring somebody home yet. So the, the pitcher, Nick West, trying to since help the, himself yeah. get a win here. So since the third inning, every inning since the third inning has had a runner at third and the scores remain the two and one, and they haven't been able to bring anybody in. Here's a pitch. Good pitch. Ooh, nice pitch, Ray. Beautiful breaking ball right over the middle. Law of averages said eventually something has got to change, right? So we'll see if they can do it here. Yeah. yeah, but you never know. Ray might be getting his, his uh, timing here. That's going to be high as I say that for a ball and we have one and one. And don't forget, you got the team behind him. So we wanna make sure that, you know, he doesn't, he wants to make sure that he doesn't mess anything up. And Ray looks in, here's the pitch. Another Ooh, great breaking ball. Man. And now West finds himself behind in the count. One ball and two strikes with two out and two on. Yeah. And a big pitch here by Bailey Ray. Yeah, that's a nice pitch by Ray there. And I, you know, personally, I'd do it again. Let's go for the same it's pitch. Work. Yeah. Let's see what he goes with. And that one's going to be hit over to third. Graf over to first. Good stretch. Oh, he got it. There. And that was Woo. that was Corey Rager. The new first baseman. He's pissed all the game. Then he goes over to first and makes the save for his number there. And once again, the Blue Devils leave runners on base and don't bring a runner in. And now it's time that the Panthers step up and get things going because we're in the final inning this possibly. It. And well, uh, it's a possibility. Barring, barring a tie. What I call potential. So what we're going to do is before this seventh inning, we're going to take a short break. This game brought to you by Azalea Orthopedics. Hey, we've got a good one here. Don't go anywhere. It's two to one at White House. We'll be right back. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. And welcome back, everybody. We got a great game here uh, with May Pearl and Central Heights as the first pitch of the top of the seventh to uh, uh, Tyson Brooks, I believe, goes for a strike. And it's a big inning, Brett, for both teams. It's just a two to one score. Anybody's in game. Strike. Anybody's game, Keith. And for the past, I believe, what, five innings, Central Heights has had runners at third base and have not been able to bring a runner in to even up the game. That's going to be high. So one ball and two strikes. As Mayperl has held on to that two run or one run lead since the top of the third. And here we are in the top of the seventh. So a big inning here for both teams. That's going to be Ooh, on the outside corner for a strike. Out. And he knew it too. He did. 
And that's the second strikeout, actually the third strikeout that Tyson, or Tanner, excuse me, that Tyson's had. So going back to my keys of the game from the, before the game, Keith, I said West needed to pitch well. He has. That's his first strikeout, I apologize. Go ahead. West has pitched well. Yes. May Pearl did get ahead, so they, their bats got ahead of them, but they didn't force West out. So that's kind of it. And there hasn't been many mistakes, if any, today, really. Right. Can you can you think of a mistake really no. today? No, and they really have haven't. I mean, the only thing I could maybe you count mistake is leaving runners on third. I mean, that's I mean, and, and that's not really a mistake. That's yeah. just they can't get the runners in. And Morgan Brooks is up to bat, and here's the first pitch of this at bat. That's going to be high and outside. The only mistake that I remember, and if you're even going to call it a mistake, is when Bryce Payne try, uh, got caught stealing second and Rager threw it a little bit high for his first yeah. baseman. That's the only error, if you want to call it an error, that they, there could be called. I just think the base runner did a good job of getting the jump. Yeah, and jump I, I think he would probably would have gotten there anyway. Right. It wasn't called an error. It wasn't in the book as an error. And I don't think it was. But if we're looking to call something an error, and there's a strike in there for another strike. So it's going to be, I believe, two and two now the count. And two and one, my uh, intern uh, Claire telling me I'm wrong. She tells me that all the time, too. Intern Claire is also my daughter. She tells me I'm wrong like 24 7. That's going to be outside three and one. You're not wrong that often. To her, I am. So three balls, one strike. And Morgan Brooks is that one's in there for a strike. Ooh. If she thought it was a ball, and how he thought it was a ball, I don't know. That looks that really was good. a good pitch. So a full count, but yeah, Brett. I, there what? There to, to answer your question, no. There has not been any errors that I could see, and that's going to be a foul ball out of play to stay alive. It's, it has been a very oh, good game. Is that that red truck out there? No, we I had her move it way away. <laughs> okay. Uh, it has been a very good game by both teams. Well, mentally played and physically played. Uh, I've enjoyed this game. It's been oh, one of yeah. the best I've, I've seen all year. Yeah, it's a, it's and we've been seen a, some good ones. It's been a battle. That's going to be hit straight up the middle of West. West is just going to grab it, toss it over to Mitchell West. And once again, a West to West put out as a one to three, actually. And out number one. That Excuse me, out of number two. I apologize. Nolan Spence. So this is the last opportunity possibly for the Panthers to get another run to cushion it a little bit. And Nolan Spence has grounded out both times he's been up to the plate. And here's the pitch by West. That's Ooh, right down the middle. Man, nice pitch. That's the thing with West, Keith. He's been very consistent all game. He's 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 been very solid. And honestly, since the third inning, when Cole Rager hit that RBI double, and that was a partial swing, they appealed down to first, and no go, says the umpire. So one and one is the count. But since the third inning, when Rager hit that RBI double. That was really the only issue that West has been in against this May Pearl team. Yep. That one play. And that was just a heck of a hit in left center field yeah, that went all the way to the fence. It was a good good hit. And, yeah. You know. Two and one the count. It happens. That's going to be hit over to Bryce Payne, the shortstop, who throws it over. And Mitchell West gets it. So here we go. Uh, we're going into the bottom of the seventh, and this is a big, big at bat for the Blue Devils of Central Heights as they have got to score. Yep. They got to get a run, at least one run to continue the game, two runs to win the game. So as we head to that, we're going to take a really short break. Our sponsor is a Orthopedics. Don't go away. We got a good one. We'll be right back. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority.
So not only, so not only are we back in the top, excuse me, bottom of the seventh, where the Blue Devils have to get something going. We're in the bottom of the seventh at the top of the lineup, Brett, for Central Heights. Yep, top of the lineup, one, two, three batters up. So it's who you want if you're Central Heights right now to uh, to do the damage. Let's see if they can do it against Ray. And Bailey Ray in his second inning, that's Ooh. gonna go inside. And uh -huh. Once again, a hit by pitch. And Bryce Payne is gonna head over. Not a way to start. Yeah, he's, he's felt that one a little bit there. Yeah, he, he tried to play it off, but I think that hurt him pretty bad. Yeah. That, I, it would have hit him in the elbow, Brett? Yeah, kind of in, inside, either the elbow or the side. I couldn't really, it's hard to tell there. Um, being it, we have a, his body between us and what happened, but he's, I don't know. He's had a great game paying us defensively today. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's been. Good shortstop. He's been all over the place and made lots of put outs. You know, good to see him shaking that off and it's going to stay in the game and run. Yeah. So the tying run on first, the winning run is Mitchell Ashley. He's going to be stepping into the plate. And Bailey Ray needs to uh, shake that off. And a big opportunity here for the Blue Devils to get this thing gone. And if if Mitchell Ashley makes it across home plate. We're still here for a little while. Yep. Time. Well, we got some. So we got a ball behind us here. And yeah, we got time. Is oh yep, got a baseball that got away. A little errant. Umpire retrieves it there. And I think we're ready to play ball now. Pain is okay. Has no pain probably over there at first. Sorry, that was a bad joke. <laughs> Here we go. Ray checks it first and brings the pitch. Squares around for a bunt. Pulls back in time, but not in time for the ball to go across for a strike. And no one won the count. We, we talked about him trying to yeah. possibly bunting last at bat and didn't he end up chopping it over just and like a bunt. He said a sacrifice bunt, a ground out, and he grounded out the last one, but he did advance the runner. To second base, so I would imagine he's going to sack punt on this one as well. He'll square around here, and the throw over to first is kind of nonchalant, trying to keep pain. He is, he does have speed, so he has been known. He's done it twice today, where he's stolen second, and that'll put him in scoring position. However, he has been stranded on third twice over the last few innings. Here's the pitch, squared around, and that's gonna go Ooh. down into foul territory on the first base side. And now, the sacrifice bunt is gone. Yeah, gonna have to. And he's gonna have to swing away. Well, he could, if he does what he did last time, if he can put it in play by swinging. Right. But he can do the same thing as a bunt, as long as he can put it in the right spot. But he's gotta hit it in certain positions. In order to make that happen, anywhere, anywhere in the infield that is playable, you're looking at a double play situation. So Bailey Ray is ready, and here's the pitch. That's going to be Ooh. fouled back. Jesus. So the count remains. Fights off and stays alive there. That was probably ball one. Well, that yeah, and you got to be careful. You got to think of the mind of Mitchell Ashley. You don't want to be the first out. You don't want to strike out. So you got to swing mm -hmm. at anything that's even close. That's he, what you're taught. He's trying to use his out at right. least to advance the runner and not just get out without right. doing anything. You don't want to put your team in a bind and be the first out without putting somebody in scoring position. You don't want you want to put pain over there at second. <clears throat> Here's the pitch. That's high for a ball. Good throwaway pitch there by Ray. I got one for you, Keith. What's that? You don't want to put, make pain's pain <laughs> not useful. There you go. That was bad. That hey, was I, was bad. Just, I was just trying to go uh, see if it was, was as bad as yours. It, it was. It was pretty bad. You didn't get the look, but it was bad. She probably didn't hear me. Yeah, she didn't hear you. She's not listening. All right, Ray ready. Here's the look over at first. 
And here's the pitch. Good pitch. It's going to go over to Rager. Rager to oh, got the force. And good job as the 6-4 to four put out as the lead runner gets taken down in the first outs there. Good job by Cole Rager to get that lead runner. That's exactly what you do. We got an appeal going on. No, I'm sorry. We're going to have a little conversation and not sure about what. He got the out. I don't know what he's. I don't know whether he's complaining about how the slide was done. I, I didn't see anything wrong with the slide. Yeah. The coach seems a little upset. But Ashley gets on first by uh, Fielder's Choice. Well, and here's the thing. Um, you, you take your your basically it's just a swap and now yeah. you have an out so and, but it, but you don't have a runner in scoring position now and it was a good play is jackson mm -hmm. glimp takes the first pitch on the outside for a ball yeah if you're mitchell ashley you wanted to hit that a little softer right you got too too quickly to the may pearl shortstop pain and yeah i mean to uh rager i'm sorry but and now you're in a position brad where even with a sacrifice bunt, you got two down. So the one out position puts you in a harder spot as that yep. goes across for a strike. And a good pitch by Ray. And Ray needs to be thinking, I need to use the people behind me. Yeah. He's got a good infield behind him. So he needs to pitch, not not meatballs. He doesn't need to do that. He's but been, he needs to pitch to the plate his and pitches not worry look, about. look better this inning. Though. He does. But he doesn't need to worry about the runner he needs to worry about what he's got in front of him with one on one out and one and one the count throws over to first and nonchalant and that just tells me just there's not much of, of uh, conviction in that throw yeah he's just wanting to make sure the runner knows he's paying attention to him glimp steps in ray Checks first. Here's the run. Steal. And the runner goes. The high throw is Oh, off it's line. over. And the throw goes out into center field. Good job by Tanner Terry. They're, they're sending him a third. What ha what, no, what happened? They're going to send him back to first base, I believe, because, well, I don't know. I'm trying to see what's going on. Did they call interference on the batter? Because he's walking and back possibly to the Possibly. They called the runner out. Excuse me, they called the batter out, and the runner has got to go back to first. Wow, that's a big, because that's a of big call. Because of batter interference, the batter, in those types of situations, the batter cannot move. The batter has to stay in, in the batter's box. And I believe the batter uh, moved in the into the line of fire. I didn't see it. Yeah. So we're going to see what happened. I was just, I was watching the play. So we got a situation going on here, and the umpires are going to come and have a conversation as the the call was made on the field. The call was made interference. The batter was called out. The runner goes back to first, and we now have two outs. And Ashton Wagner is going to step up, and we have a maddening crowd to our left. Wow. And the coach, I believe, is just trying to figure out, of uh, Maypearl is trying to figure out what's going on. He's trying to get the crowd into it on their side. Yeah. Now, the Blue Devils coach tried to, I guess, ask what was going on and no appeal was called for. And I don't know if the explanation was good enough to find out. I mean, well, usually an appeal is called, but the umpires kind of came Well, here's up. what we got, Keith. We got Ashton Wagner, your cleanup hitter. Yep. Probably usually where you put one of your better hitters and in a position where he needs yep. a hit. He, there's no sacrifices. There's mm -hmm. no. And he's flown out. He's walked, and he's grounded out this game so far. Looking but he's not faced Bailey Ray yet. And this is big plays. Big, big players play. can make big plays. We'll see if he can do it. Ooh. Good job. As Ray throws a good breaking ball over the middle for a strike, so Owen won the count. And Ray looks in. Here's the pitch. That's going to go outside. And 
I'm sorry, I was laughing a little bit. Price Payne, or is that? No, that's not Payne. I apologize. That's Ashley. Kind of could have gotten caught. He kind of almost slipped. Yeah, if Brooks would have thrown that over to first. That might have been the third out. But a good job by Brooks to keep it. As Ray brings the pitch. Good pitch. A little high. high. It's close. Real close. And two and one now the count. So the possibility of the final out here as the Blue Devils down to their last two strikes possibly. Ray checks the runner at first, brings it home and Ooh. fouls backwards. Ooh. And here we go as the Maypearl side has gotten on their feet cheering their team. All quiet on the Central Heights side, which is understandable. And a lot of thoughts going through number 15's head as Ashton Wagner is trying to wrap his head around the enormity of this next at this next pitch that he's about to see. Yeah, none and, bigger of the season right here for Wagner. And I, I, uh, I feel for this. This is a big situation here. Two balls and two strikes. Ray takes the runner at first from the stretch. Here's the pitch home. That's going to be hit up the middle. Over to Rager. Rager touches second. And that's the ball game. As the Maypearl Panthers take the second game and will advance to the next round of the playoffs. Wow, what a game, Keith. And, and a costly mistake that well, may or what, did I, what did I talk about? Right. The, and we just the, talked about it. Like we, there wasn't any mistakes, no. and that one mistake changed the entire inning right there. And unfortunately, it was it was a mistake that was not done purposefully. It no. was not done no. uh, strategically. It was not done by any kind of play, gameplay, formally, anything like that. It was yeah. just he happened to be in the wrong place. He stepped out. He shouldn't have. It was just something that happened, and I feel for that kid because he's got to live with that. Yeah. And I'm not going to blame him for it. He should not be blamed for it. The fans should not, and they're not going to. No. It, and he does not need to think that because that's something anybody – pros do it. Everybody does. It's not yeah. something – and it just so happened to be on this last game – and I, I, my heart goes out to him. It really does. Yeah, I feel like I did the announcer's jinx. I said, yeah. you know, there hadn't been a single mistake all day, you know, and that kind of – that wasn't a mistake that I was – that I would have seen coming. You know, I was thinking like be a fielding error, things like that. And I, and I know the coach from Central Heights is going to talk to him and let him know that he did a good job. He had a good game. It's a teachable moment and as a coach a right there. a moment as a coach. I don't know, you know – how it, but I know the coach and the team and the fans don't the, Jackson Glim did not lose this ball game. No, they had how many how many times Keith did Central Heights leave runners on third yeah, base? It was just they played a fantastic game. They played yeah. a fantastic they just, season and they just they, they just didn't cash in when they yeah. had runners in scoring this today right. and that's be honestly that was did it. West yeah. pitched extremely well. Um and they probably played a great game. I mean, that's right. not taking anything no. away from them. They played they, they played well as well. But I honestly, if you look back at this game, Central Heights had more chances to score. Yes. They just didn't cash in when they had the opportunities. They really did. And Maypearl, you know, honestly, if you want to look at it, Maypearl played a great game. But you're right. Central Heights just – and Nick West pitched a fantastic game for the Blue Devils. And so did uh, – Bailey Ray did a good job coming in. But let's not take away from Cord Rager – who yeah. pitched a heck of, what, six innings? Yeah. And just did a great job of coming in and, and er, coming in early and just doing a great job. Both teams did great. Uh, congratulations to uh, the Panthers for advancing. And congratulations yep. to the Blue Devils for a fantastic season. Nothing to shake a stick at, nothing to hold your head down by. No, if you're still playing right now, you're you're a good team. Because yeah. I, I, I would almost be willing to bet that both of these teams, if they are seniors on the teams, they've already graduated high school. Oh, yeah. So they're still – I mean, if you play past graduation, that's, that's says, that says a lot. About, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, you know I'm, I bet you and I can guarantee you each of these fan bases are extremely proud of both their teams. I can tell just by 
uh, watching them. Mm -hmm. And uh, being here, we're happy that we got to be here and witness this. Uh, both these teams, this is probably one of the best games, I'll say, that we've probably done all year. And we hopefully will have a series next week. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll be sharing that soon once we find out who wins around the area. Yep. Um, Hey, we have Fridays off for the next. Uh, I know I mean, we do. Man, that's exciting. <laughs> so we'll we'll make we'll definitely uh, hopefully be able to uh, catch some series uh, around here since we have some. We're gonna do our best, but uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you are listening to us on our YouTube channel. If you're watching us on Texan Live, go to YouTube.com/slash/NetSN Live and like and subscribe. That way you don't miss any of our content. All of our content is on our YouTube channel, so you'll be able to go back and watch it. This is our first year to do baseball. We love every minute of it. We also do other sports, basketball, football. We're going to try a little volleyball next year, see what that is all about. But we try to get around and do all the sports that we can here around the East Texas area and a little playoff action as well. But for Brett and Rob and intern Claire, uh, this is Keith Whitman signing off here from White House Athletic Complex. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. We'll see y'all next time. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, Contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority.